All right, so you got your website. Now we just gotta wait for your visitors to come. Have they come yet? Have we come yet? I'm running out of time here. If they haven't come yet, they're probably never gonna come, but I can help you with that. Today's video is about on-page SEO, and we're gonna jump right into it. Let's go. Hey guys, this is Adrian Boysell and welcome back to another training video. Please make sure you hit that like, subscribe and comment so I can get to know you and that YouTube sees our stuff as important and shows it to more people just like you. So today's video is about on-page SEO. I'm gonna dive into the five parts that you need to know in terms of your on-page SEO. What are the important areas? I started doing SEO back in 2007 and it's an area that I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money to develop. And so I wanna share these things with you. I wanna give this information to you so you can apply them to your graphic design, motion design, or web design business and continue to grow. So the first part of SEO is understanding that it's driven by keywords. People are searching for terms online, keywords which are long tail and short tail. I actually did that backwards. Short tail and long tail. Short tail keywords are plumber near me. That's a short tail keyword easy, doesn't have a whole lot of intent, except you know by somebody searching plumber near me, they are looking for a plumber that's in their geographical area. A long tail keyword was, what is, why is my septic system backing up into my yard? That is a long tail keyword that you can also rank for. You can create a whole page of content on your website. So keywords are a critical part of doing your on-page SEO. There are other elements that go into it, like making sure that the slug or the URL for that specific page that you wanna rank is correct. So if you have a page called how to fix my septic system, then you need to have a slug that says nextgenseptics.com forward slash how to fix my septic system. It's really important you do that. The title of that page should be how to fix my septic system. So it's important to understand that you have your URLs, you have your keywords, you got the slug that I talked about of adriangraphics.com forward slash logo design. You need to have those types of things in there. You need to have your meta descriptions and you need to have your page titles right. It's really important that you have those four key things. Understand that keywords are what drives organic search traffic. People are searching for terms and you wanna make sure that they're searching for a term that actually brings them to you with an intent to buy. Because sending somebody to your page for the keyword plumber isn't gonna do anything for you. That's too broad of a term. It isn't specific enough. Just like if I were to have a YouTube keyword term like marketing, you gotta get more specific. Is it digital marketing? Is it online marketing? Is it guerrilla marketing? Start to get more specific and you'll start to find that you have a lot more luck. Number two is accessibility and crawling of your website and the user experience. The accessibility is how are people viewing your website on a mobile device? How are they viewing it on a tablet? How are they viewing it on their cell phone? It's understandable that a lot of people don't understand this piece because responsive websites can be a little bit more technical, but you need to understand it from the user's perspective, from the visitor's perspective, and from the business owner's perspective that owns the website, that your website should look great on all of those devices, different screen sizes. So that's what's really important about having a website. Google Google actually grades that now, how fast that page loads, and we're gonna talk more about that. Another key to user experience, accessibility, and crawling is understanding that you need to have a sitemap on your website. A sitemap tells Google, Bing, and Yahoo what pages are on your website, what's the hierarchy of those pages, what they should, how they should be prioritized, if they're a blog article versus a regular page. These are all important keys to actually having your site indexed. And index basically means being seen by the search engines. This is a really big and important area. And you need to also have a robots.txt file. It's just a technical term that's used for just the robots being able to know how often to crawl your website. The last piece of this is understanding that your site needs to load quickly. If you are making people wait more than three or four or five seconds, you're gonna lose 70, 80, or even 90% of your traffic because people just don't wanna wait. They have short attention spans and if your website is slow because you're using something like GoDaddy or you're using a low, low quality hosting service, you need to upgrade that. You need to get CDN, which stands for Content Delivery Network. You need to get a virtual private server or something that's gonna be quick like AWS or what we use is InMotion Hosting 
something, something that's gonna help your website load quickly. And you can test your website on a website called GT Metrics. If you go to gtmetrics.com, you can put your URL on there, it'll give you a scan, and it'll tell you how fast your site is and what's slowing it down. This is really, really important for you to do because I want you to have a fast loading website. It's part of the accessibility, it's part of the user experience. If you're losing 80, 90% of your traffic because your site's slow, that's something you need to fix right away. Now, number three is the setup and the importance of tracking. A lot of web designers don't track their stuff. A lot of graphic designers don't track their stuff. And this is an area that most business owners need to pick up on is you can track your stuff on a very detailed level. You can do the basic stuff like Google Analytics where you track how many people visited your website, how long they stayed, what pages they went to, where they exited the page. But you also wanna set up something like heat maps, which you can use Sumo or you can use Hotjar. And you can actually set these websites up so you can see what they're clicking on, what they're scrolling, how far they're scrolling, uh, how many times they're clicking on an object. This is gonna allow you to make improvements over time to your website. They're gonna improve the user experience. So that's gonna help you with number two. Now tracking can get very, very detail oriented. So I don't have time for that in this video, but if you want more information or if you have a question about tracking, definitely drop it down in the comments because I'd love to answer those questions for a future video. All right, now number four is schema markup, rich snippets and open graph. Those are kind of terms that all kind of fall into the same bucket, but what that basically means is you're dropping in code and you're dropping in content that's telling Google and Yahoo and Bing, hey, this is information for this specific question. So one of the common things that we do on our website is we have questions like, what is a better platform for my website, Weebly or WordPress? We compare the two and we give a synopsis of what that is. So if somebody goes to Google and they type in, what's a better website? content management system, WordPress or Weebly, it's gonna give them all the valuable information and we're telling Google what that information is. If we have a great answer and it's detailed and it has the right structure, which is the rich snippet structure or the schema markup, if you will, that's gonna help that page rank a lot better. This is an area that I see a lot of SEO people and even marketers ignore in general that'll cost you a ton of traffic if you look at some of the pages on my website like sacramento marketing agency or sacramento video production you'll see that we have some of those bullet points right below our listing that actually make our listing twice as tall as the other listings so this is a really big deal you should definitely capitalize on that and this is just an important part of seo the last piece I wanna talk about is some of the on-page stuff is your image tags, your title tags, your meta descriptions inside of each section of your website. You wanna make sure that you put image titles on every single one. So you'll see an alt tag. You wanna put the description of that image. When you upload that photo, you wanna upload it with a title and you wanna also make sure that the location information for that image is turned on. If there was no location image information on there, then you wanna add that back into it and I'll show you on another video here in the future. So we'll jump back into that, but it's important that you have links as well. So the links are gonna help you tell Google what pages link to other pages within your site. A great example of that is Wikipedia. Wikipedia has been around for a really long time now, and they are the best example of how on-page SEO should be done. Interlinking within your website so that people can stay on there longer is gonna help that rate increase, and it's gonna help your, your search engine traffic overall improve because you're gonna have a low bounce rate. And a bounce rate just basically means somebody lands on your website and bounces right off. You wanna reduce that as much as possible. You want people to stay on your site as long as possible. So understanding that there's internal links that are gonna help people stay, and then there's gonna be external links that refer them out to your social profiles, to like your YouTube, your Facebook channel, and to other websites. This is gonna help you build credibility. This is gonna help you with your SEO. This is just overall a very, very important part of doing SEO, especially on-page SEO. Our next video is gonna be about off-page SEO. I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into that. I'm gonna explain what it is and why it's important. And so I just thank you guys for tuning in today. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell and as always, keep looking up.